want us today to go to and speak about something that is so precise and very much serious about our Christianity or our Christian life. Let us go to the book of Jeremiah. The verse that we all know, chapter 29. Can I read? I want us to read from verse 11 to 14. So allow me to read it for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Because where he says the Lord, not said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. It will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me start by saying we are living in a time where God wants to show his manifold wisdom through us in this earth or in this world or with the people that we are living with. God wants to show us that indeed he is a true God. I have heard so many times and so many other people speaking and say, these are the last days. I do believe also. But I also believe that during these last days, God has something that he wants to do in the Christian community. So that so that other people may know that we are serving a living God. But in that kind of criteria or that kind of space where we are living as Christians, we tend to find ourselves not living the way or not reaching the level where God wants us to reach because of this and that or because of other things that we are meeting along the way and other things that are happening in our lives. So today I want us to go and speak about expectations. Where I have read in verse 11, in other versions it says at the end it does not speak about hope and future. It speaks about an expected end. An end that we are all looking for. An end that we want to see one day. An end that we want to see and attain and have one day in our lives. Why? Because we have told ourselves that we are Christians. Now, when we have read, the Bible says, God is saying I to us, I know. Why do God say I know? He knows because he is our God. He knows. God knows. God has thoughts towards us. And the Bible says, not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of good things. Thoughts of things that we are looking for. Thoughts of things that we are wishing to have one day. Now the Bible says, God says this word unto Jeremiah to go and tell the children of Israel, I have good thoughts for you. I have good thoughts for you. I want you to live as kings and queens in this world. 
Now when we become born again, when we become saved, most of us we heard a lot of things being spoken. Some of the things that were being spoken were when you are become born again, when you become a Christian, your life will be very smooth. When you become a Christian, you will be blessed when you go in and you will be blessed when you go out. When you become a Christian, you don't become sick. When you become a Christian, there are no challenges that you'll meet along the road. When you become a Christian, there are no longer delays in your life. You only encounter breakthrough or financial success and whatever. That is what we hear as Christians. But now, there is a problem that we are encountering again as Christians. While we are expecting all these good things that God has said unto us through his servants or through his word, we don't look at the kind of lifestyle that we are living, the lifestyle that will lead us to the kind of expectations that we want. Hallelujah. There are a lot of expectations that we have as children of God. Today I want us to go and speak and we, we analyze it so that we can understand it. In the book of Genesis chapter 48, when Jacob reached in Egypt, Joseph came to meet his father. Remember, Joseph was sold by his own brothers and he ended up in Egypt. He ended up in the king's palace. Now it came to a time where there was lack of food, there was hunger, there was drought. And now Joseph was the one who was placed on top there, who was working as a person that can make food to be there so that they can be able to supply to everyone on earth. So now when his brothers came one day, they were coming to also buy food like others. But when they reached there, the brothers couldn't recognize him, but he could recognize them. Okay, I'm not looking at the bad thing that they've done. But what I want us to look at is, one day, when they came, he said, where is your younger brother? Go and bring him. I want to see him. And one day again, he said to them, go and bring me your father. Because I am your brother. The one who was lost. Go back home and take everyone else and come with him. Now the Bible says, that day when he reached there, Joseph went and take his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and brought them to his father. Now his father was supposed to speak a word of blessing upon his children. Why? Because when they were born, the father was not there. Now when the children reached to the old man, the old man started to pray for them. If you go about that story, when you read that story, you'll understand. He blessed them, he prayed for them that they will prosper in everything. The last word that he said, he said unto them, and God, my God, the God of my fathers, will make you to go back to the land of your fathers. Hallelujah. He will make you to do what? To go back to the land of your fathers. The land that you are living in right now is a foreign land. Yes, you are my grandchildren, but you are in a foreign land. But the time is coming where you are going to be taken to your father's land. It took many years. Israel died. And the children of Israel started to be men in Egypt. They started to be captives, to be in captivity. They started to be slaves in Egypt. Because why? The king that was there before, the king who knew the God that they were serving was no longer there. That is why they started to be slaves. Now, when the time came, remember, these Israelites, they are living in Egypt. But there was a promise that was made by an old man. One day you have to go back to your father's land. I believe those people of Egypt... Of, of Israel that were living in Egypt, they were understanding what one day they have to go back to their father's land. 
until a time came when they were getting used to the captivity that they were living in like us when we start to get used to the life of Christianity and we don't even remember the promises and the things that God has told us that they are going to happen in our lives they get used to be enslaved they get used to be beaten every day they got used to whatever that was happening in their lives and they forgot that vanalele haye that's a piece They've got a home of promise. If you can read the Bible nicely, it will explain to you. There's nobody in the children of Israel that went to cry to God and just say, this week I'm taking my time. I want to go and tell the God of our fathers that we are suffering, we need to go. God himself saw God, he himself saw when he was in heaven that my children are suffering. It's time that I take them out of captivity. It's like us as Christian children of God. God saw that we were suffering. God saw that we don't have hope. God saw that we don't have a future. And he said to himself, I will send my son so that my son can go and buy them back so that they can come to me and start serving me as their God. Now, when God started, started to choose Moses, and said, Moshe, I've got a job with you. There's something that you have to do for me. Their children, my children are crying. I have heard their cries. Now it's time that you go and take them. They have to go to the promised land. The land of their fathers. The land I've promised Abraham, Jacob and Isaac. That I will give unto them. They have to go there. And God sent Moses to go there. And deliver them that future and that hope was starting to come to pass. Now, Christians, as we are children of God, we have expectations. When we become born again, we have expectations. When we have these expectations along the road, we forgot, we forget, we do away with what God has promised us. Because of the many, many things that we are meeting in life, we forget that we are supposed to go somewhere. I believe each and every one of us that is here today, we are here because we've got expectations. Am I right? Now the problem is, we are given an expected end, hope and future. But what is happening today is, we have forgotten about this hope and this future. Let me give you a beautiful example. An expecting mother. When a mother is expecting, she has to abide to some laws. She has to walk in a certain way. She does not walk like a soldier. She walks softly and slowly and gently. Why? Because she's expecting. Now, this mother again, because she's expecting, she does not eat no maganjani, she does not eat everything. There are things she has to eat, there are things she does not have to eat. There are things she has to do, there are things she does not have to do. There are cars she has to climb, but others she does not have to climb. Huh? Am I right? An expecting mother, but even the cars that you will uh, get inside, you will first see that these people will start to arrange first and then she will go inside. Why? Because she's expecting. Can you tell the person that is close to you? You are expecting. You cannot walk the way you are walking. 
You cannot do things the way you are doing them. You have to do them on a certain lifestyle, on a certain kind. So now when the children of Israel went out of Egypt, they walked along the road and everything went on and on and on and on until we came to the time of the prophets, whatever. I don't want to speak about those. But what I wanted us to look at is the expected end. You know, whatever that God promises us, he makes sure that it comes to pass. If God says he's going to heal you, he makes sure that you are healed. If God says he will prosper you, he makes it a point that you prosper. If God said he will put you high, high above all nations, he makes sure that he puts you high, high above all nations. Why? Because he wants these people, this, to know that you are serving a big and a great and awesome God. Now the problem is, I'm still going to read the Bible. The problem is, Manaba Papa, we are no longer living the Christianity that can change a life of somebody that is looking at you. We yes, have this kind of lifestyle, the Christianity that we are living in today. In Christianity, you wani wakaba We want to be seen. We want to be noticed. When you say something, you want to be encouraged. When you do something, you want something to come and bet you at the back and say you've done it right. No, this is not the time, children of God. This time is the time for us to go outside there and show them that the God that we are serving is a living God. The God that we are serving is a God that cares and loves us so much. I read the Bible. And I heard the Bible says, He shall pour blessings, so much blessings upon us that there won't be even room enough huh, to carry them. In other words, there will be blessing on the left, blessing on the right, blessing in front, blessing at the back, but you must be expecting them. You must be expecting them. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what is it that you are expecting? We as Christians, there are so many, many blessings that has been written in the word of God. He is our healer. He is our strength. He is the light of the world. He is our food. He is our bread. He is everything that we want. Now when he got down, when we were reading it, I said I will read verse 11 only. It says in verse 12, When you call and pray, I will listen. When you call and pray, I will listen. I said in the beginning, the children of Israel never called God so. Can you tell the person that is close to you, God is seeing you. God so. And he said, uh uh, it's enough. My children are suffering. I have to go and take them out of Egypt. Because if it's not so, they'll go to extinction. And those things that I spoke that I will give unto them, it will never happen. It is time for me to go and do something so that they can be taken out. Now, when they reach their promised lands, where God has promised them, it was good for them. The Bible says the land was flowing with milk and honey. Whatever that they wanted was there. God walked with them along the road. Everywhere they go, they were victorious. There were some other things that will happen in their lives, but God will make sure that they conquer. If they do wrong, God will come to them, speak with them, so that they repent and they go back to God and they go forward with their whole road and go where God wanted them to go. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now, when the children of Israel reached the promised land, they were given a promise because of everything that was happening that a savior will come, a redeemer will come to come and save them. Why? Because they were under the rulership of the Romans and whatever. They were not free anymore. And God promised them, I'm going to send somebody that will come and take you out of the problems that we are having. Now, when we read in the Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it says, the wise men saw a star of showing that a king was born. Of showing that somebody different was born. That was a promise that God has given to them. In other words, the Israelites were living and they were expecting something to come and happen in their lifetime. Why? Because things were heavy for them. Things were not going the way they were expecting. And the Bible says, these men, when they saw the stars, they started going around searching for where their son was born so that they can go and see him themselves. So that they can be sure that indeed the Messiah has come. The Bible says they went around until they went to the ruler's place to ask where the king was born. These people were having expectation. They were expecting something. You know, when you are, you are expecting, you go around searching for that which you are expecting. Hallelujah. When you are expecting a car, you go around garages searching for that car that you are searching for. You are expecting a car. Uh -uh. When you are expecting a job, you go around marketing searching for that job that you are expecting. When you are searching for blessings, spiritual blessings, you go around and you find a church and sit down and listen so that you can find that spiritual blessing that you are looking for. Everything that you are looking for, you have to go somewhere and search for it so that you can find it. Now these wise men, they went around searching for the king that was born. Why? Because they heard before that a king was going to be born. And now they saw a star. And this star was saying unto them, that king you were waiting for for long, 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 long. Now he has arrived. And they said to themselves, it's long we've been expecting this king to come. Let us go and see him by our own eyes. And we know that when we see him, we will know him. The Bible said they were wise men. They could read even the stars. They saw a star. The Bible says they went out and followed the star and followed and followed and followed until they reached where the sun was and indeed it was him. Now when you go again downward, after Jesus was born, after Jesus has grown, after Jesus was supposed to be what he was supposed to be in the book of Matthew again, chapter 11, the Bible said John was in jail. He was in jail. And he called two of his disciples. He said to them, can you go and ask him, is he the one? Or are we still expecting another? You know, when you are waiting in expectation, it is very much painful. Because you don't know what this thing is going to happen. You don't know why when this change is going to come to you. You don't know when this thing that you have been told is going to happen. But I want to tell, tell you today that whatever that you were expecting since 2,000 years ago is going to happen today. Yeah. 
Now when this disciple reached to Jesus, they said to him, we've been sent by our master John. He said we must come and ask, are you the one or we are still expecting? Can you tell the person that is close to you, your expecting is over. And Jesus answered them in a very good way. He said, go and tell him what you have heard and what you have seen. I don't need to speak for myself. You know, when the miracle come to your life, the miracle does not explain me or I'm here. You will just see or this one is a miracle. Even your neighbor will see that this one is a miracle. Why? Because it's long you've been expecting. When you see an expectant mother who was expecting for nine full months, when you see her now wearing skinny jeans and beautiful blouses and blah, 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 and shoes that you can stand up on your toes, you start asking yourself, where is the baby? Why? Because you know she was expecting. Hallelujah. Jesus said to them, go and tell them. Tell him what you hear and what you see. Why? Because your expectation does not need to be explained. It explains itself. You will hear people saying, I am blessed. But when, I'm not speaking the one of faith. But when we look at you, we don't see them. You will hear people say, uh, you know, I've been taken up. But when we look at you, we don't see the taken up. You are still that same original person that we know. But I have a message for you today. Wana Papa is over. It is over. We have waited enough. It's over. We have waited for such a long time. But today it's over. Today that waiting and waiting and waiting. It's over. Our nine months. It's over. Our 12 months. It's over. Our two years. It's over. Our three years. It's over. Our four years. It's over. Why? Because Christ has come. The Bible says, go and tell him what you hear and what you see. I believe those men, when they went back, they said to you, John, hey, that's what is written in the Bible. The lame are walking, the blind are seeing, the dumb are speaking, hey, the sick are being healed. Uh, those who have nothing, they are having something these days. Those who are nobodies are starting to be somebodies these days. Those who we don't recognize, we are starting to recognize them. Today, both fishermen Pedro, there are now people that walk around with the big people, with the big men, they are no longer catching fishes. They are now walking, they are called the apostles. That is why we, what we are seeing today. It means now that man has come. The Bible says, thank you, Jesus. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. That is point number one you have to write down. We are Christians, isn't it? We are born again, isn't it? But our ways are not God's ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It's long we've been expecting. But we have to change our ways. So that our ways can go hand in hand with the ways of God. So that our thoughts can go hand in hand with the thoughts of God. Whatever he thinks is what we think. Whatever he does is what we do. Whatever he says is what we do. 
Whatever he speaks is what we do. Unless otherwise children of God, we change the kind of lifestyle that we are living and we abide and stay in the word of God. We will expect and expect and expect and we will never give birth. Why? Because we are not living the kind of lifestyle that God wants us to live so that we can reach the promised land. The promised land is our land. Blessings is our portion. Good life is our portion. Eh? Breakthrough is our portion. Prosperity, yes, is our portion. Success is our portion. But our thoughts must be like the thoughts of God. Our ways must be like the ways of God. As the minds of God are higher, we must also ascend and go higher and reach where God is so that our blessings can come down to our level. We are not able to reach our expected ends because our ways are still our ways. Our thoughts are still our thoughts. Our doings are still our doings. Whatever we do is still whatever what that we've been doing two years ago. You know, I love Paul when Paul comes and says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ liveth in me. The things that I love, I do not do. But I do that which Christ wants me to do. We have to reach that space, that time as Christians, where we declare and say to ourselves, I don't want to live anymore. I want Christ to live in me. I don't want to be visible anymore. I want Christ to be visible in me. I don't want you to know me. I want Christ to be known through me. I don't want to be heard. I want Christ to be heard through me. We are doing a lot of things here on earth. But let me tell you, we are not finding or reaching where we are thinking we will reach one day. Why? Because we are still living in our own self. We are not doing things the way God wants them to be done. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. It says. That I may know him. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being conformed to his death. Can I repeat it? That I may know him and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. If you are expecting, you must know him. Can you ask the person that is closer, do you know him? If you are expecting, you must know him. If you are expecting again, you must know his power. You must know his power. You must know him. There's power in the name of Jesus. You must know the power that make him to rise from the dead. Because you'll be knowing him. The issue that is making us fail, pastors, today is that we don't know him. Uh, we know him, but we don't know him. We know him outside, but we don't know his power. We know him, but we don't even understand his death. We are not conformed to that which made Christ to be called Christ. The reason one. The savior. The Bible says we must know him. And we must fellowship, partake in his death. 
We die with him and we rise with him again. And then we are called the children of God. And then after being called the children of God, let me just explain something little small. When you are a child of God, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a lifestyle. You change the kind of life you were living. You start to live like Christ. Everything that we are doing here in Christianity, we are only imitating one person. Only one. Not Makananis. Not Eunice. Uh -uh. Only one. Christ Jesus. That's the one we are imitating. How We are trying to be like him. And now, when now you know him, when you stay closer to him, this is what I've heard. I was never a talkative person. I was a very quiet person. But I married a talkative husband. Now I'm so talkative, I'm even better than him. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, in other words, Papa, when you're always closer to Christ, that which is in Christ comes to you. That which is in you goes to Christ. And now your life becomes changed. When you start walking around, you will see people looking at you. Why? Because it is no longer you that is walking, but Christ is walking. The time when Jesus was about to be crucified, one daughter said to the people that were around, Peter, you, 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 you were with him. And Peter said, no, it's not me. And he ran away. He goes to the other side. They pointed to him again, you, 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 you're with him. Why? Because they were always together. Now the problem is, children of God, we are not able to reach our expectation. Why? We are not together with him. What do we do? We do for our own benefit. Now the time has come, children of God, that we become Christians that live like him, that do things like him, that walk like him, that talks like him, that preaches like him, that breathes like him, that do everything like him. Why? So that this world that we are living in, Papa, hey, it has to know we are tired of seeing things that are happening, that are not showing that Christ Jesus was here on earth. Now it is my opportunity and your opportunity to stand up as a child of God and say enough is enough. I want to imitate Christ. I want to live like him. I want to do things like him. When I breathe, I must be breathing like him. When I talk, Jesus must be talking. When I walk, Jesus must be walking. I must be a woman with a difference. Why? Because I'm close to him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. I'm finishing. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. God knows us. The Bible says before you even go and ask, you know what you're going to say. Before you even start crying, you know what you're going to tell him. And he's able to do above what you're going to ask. Is able to do above what you are expecting. Some of us here, we are expecting jobs. Let me tell you, the jobs that you are going to get are above your imagination. Some of us, we are expecting that God lift the standard of our lives. When God lifts you, 
Everybody who searches for you must search for you up there. Why? Because when he blesses, he blesses abundantly. Ah, rope. He does not rope. He does not take what belongs to you and give it to another. He waits for you to start conforming, going according to his word and knowing his power and being close to him. Then he will give you what you've been expecting. The issue of us not receiving children of God is because we don't know him. Mm, we know him, but we don't know him. If really we know him, we will never, never play before him. Never. If we know him, you know, grace is so abundant these days. We even forget who we are. Because of grace. You know, by that time, you will sin. When you sin, you are better. Oh, better, same time. But Joshua went to I. I. They were defeated. Hmm? Better. Why? Because somebody took things that you were not supposed to take. And all of them became punished because of Eunice. Those days, the grace was not yet there. Now, Christ Jesus has come so that we can find grace. That is why you see us playing in front of God. It is because there is grace. I have a cry every day. My cry is, God teach us so that we don't play in front of you. 